What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, it's episode number 15 and today we are starting off with, as we saw at the back end of the last episode, the January transfer window opening. It's like the best part of the season, isn't it, when the January window opens and you can make transfers once again. And we had two bids to two of our star players to begin with though, waste of time those clubs putting in those bids there for Finn Ole Becker and Ransford Yabar. Obviously they were going to be rejected, however, we did have an interesting bid here for Kevin Brawl. And as we know, he's our number one, officially, but not our starting goalkeeper. FC, oh, I can never pronounce his team's name, Midtjylland, wanted to bring him uh, to the Scandinavian side. And, what? They wanted to sign him, basically. And I said to them, three million or forget it. He literally just signed a contract extension in the very last episode. So I said, three million or he's not yours. He's on a high salary, Kevin bro. So actually, in the end, I was pretty pleased to let him go, because as we know, Sasha Hubner just came to me here saying, I know that eventually you're going to be looking for a new goalkeeper, but I think I can do a job for you in that position if you give me the chance. Sasha has become our starting goalkeeper this year. Last season, he shared the game time with Kevin, but now we're putting our faith in the teenager, and he's not let us down. He's got more clean sheets than anyone else in the two league right now. So yeah, bold decision there, selling our 26-year-old goalkeeper and our most experienced goalkeeper, but... Look, we're playing for the future. We've got faith in the youngsters, so Sasha will now become the official number one. I might even change his jersey number as well. Nah, I won't. I'll wait till the end of the season. I never like to change the jersey number until the end of the season, you know, just for hashtag realism. Anyway, uh, on the back of the sale there, and our budget going up to £3 million, we will take on SC Paderborn for the first game of four in today's episode, and the first one of January on the back of the winter break. Yes, we went away for the winter break, and now returning here after a few weeks off. Uh, to the lead, early on to the game, for you know who, for Paderborn, would respond but 31 minutes into the game it's that man once again Ransford you boa this guy I mean I swear I, you know if I've taken about 100 shots with him 95 have hit the target this guy is just so lethal with either foot and he's banged in a couple of his head as well makes it 2-1 restores our leader his second of the game and then right for the hour mark here rolls it through to Diawusi down the left hand side beats his man and bangs it into the top corner as well 3-1 Dresden 2 goal cushion and the 3 points in the back with half an hour to go as well. Hasn't scored as many goals as last season, I will see. I'll be the first to admit that obviously, as we know, Daphna is now ordinarily coming off the bench, if not sharing the game time with the youngster in from Leverkusen as well. But he's still an important part of our side, Diawusi. We still love him a lot. Big goal there in a 3-1 victory. And following out yet another bid as well. And also you might notice as well, uh, one of our players approached on a free transfer. I'll discuss that in just a moment's time. But you might notice that in your career mode say as well. When a player is approached by another team for a free transfer and a free contract, you don't get notified of it until a day has passed. It doesn't really matter, obviously, because normally it takes at least two to three days for the contract to go through but anyway he looks like he's on his way out of the club on a free transfer wasn't going to get a new contract anyway so I'm totally fine with that and for the second of four games in today's episode final one of January taking on Carlos Ruff away from home once again that man Ransford Yabar opening the scoring you know I mentioned very briefly he's not going to score 40 goals this year but 30 is definitely on scores the first goal opens the scoring and then five minutes before the break oh my God, he's just too good, man. He's just too good. He is just like playing a level below where he should be right now. Whatever happens, he'll be in the Bundesliga next year. But we know for sure it's going to be for us if we keep our form up. We still haven't lost since match day four, I believe. And the winning run and the unbeaten run is extended with a 3-0 victory here. Ransford Yabal with back-to-back -back braces and Albert Simon getting his 10th goal of the season. He's our second highest scorer this season. Made it to uh, sorry 3-0 in a 3-0 victory. So falling out another bid for Ransford Yabal. Oh, no surprise, but there you go, they're right there, Patrick Wyroch, uh, he's on his way out of the club on a free transfer, you'll see that deal goes through as well, totally fine with me though, he's played three times this season, two in the second Liga and our DFB Pokal game as well, but he's 27 years old, he's not a bad squad player, but we're of course prioritising the future, so I'm fine letting him go on a free transfer, wasn't going to get a new contract anyway, and also on deadline day with around £3 million in our budget, I did decide to bring in one new signing to the team, and I chose this guy, he's been on our shortlist since episode one, it's Lily Ian Egloff of Stuttgart and we decided to pick him up for valuation 2.2 mil and a very cheaply, a cheap weekly wage of 3.4 grand a week as well. I mentioned this before but young players in this year's FIFA career mode, when you're going after them practically always put in a valuation bid because if they're not a starter at their club, the club will almost always accept it if not ask for a minor sell-on clause included, or maybe up by 100, 200 grand. Clubs don't seem to value young players like they would in real life in this year's FIBA CM, so 
it's just a great way of getting in young talents on valuation deals or close to valuation deals. So Egoff comes in, sadly shows no potential tag whatsoever, but with dynamic potential that could improve over time. But already, I think it's 67 overall, just 19 years old. We know he won't start ahead of Albert Simon, but good competition for Rocco Wrights on the bench and more squad depth with another decent young teenager coming in as well. Following that, a couple more bids on deadline day, including one for five. We had a lot of bids for five for this year. He's grown two ratings to be fair and done really well this season. So not a, not a big surprise, I suppose. And also one for Armindo Side, which we rejected from Stuttgart as well. But that'll do it for deadline day. Just the one signing in the NC the top deals there. Yuri Tielemans going from Leicester to Juve for 70 mil. I thought that was really interesting there. And as the window ends and we have a scouting update and an academy update as well, we leave around 1 million in the budget. That'll carry over to next season's transfer budget. And as we know, it's really important to leave a bit of cash in your budget to hopefully get a bigger transfer budget in the following season. And hopefully we will be rewarded with saving a bit of cash this season. So a brief look at the academy as well. Well, Leo Casper will get a pro deal soon, but at 16 years old, he's not asking for one yet, but 60 overall can now check his potential. 82 to 88. I'm hoping that one-star weak foot will get increased very, very quickly because we've already got two players with five-star weak foots in our back three, I believe, right now. So I'd love for him to have another. I'd love to get another centre-back with a five-star weak foot as well. But he's looking pretty decent and probably the highest-rated uh, uh, potential player in our academy right now. And look at our squad as we're now done between now and the end of the season. And again, whilst we only brought in one player in January, January. I, I didn't feel the need to improve our squad depth. If it remains at 29, the squad is totally fine. Like, again, playing 34 games a season, the league, we're out of the cup already. No European football yet. We don't need to worry about squad depth. We just need first team quality. And we've got that. We're a three star team now. We've got some amazing players in our team. Albert Simon and Ransford Yuboa, both 75. And I think actually Simon might be 76 overall now. Our centre backs are going pretty nicely as well. And again, most importantly, 14 games to go with five points clear of Freiburg in second, 11 clear of Bielfeld in third. You Union Berlin have really fallen off the pace with 14 games to go. They need to get a move on if they're going to challenge the title, which is looking very likely at the start of this season. And you see our four games for February here, starting off with Group of Firth at home uh, for the first of four. We've got a great chance now to pull away from the chasing pack and most importantly, pull away from third place. Obviously, I want back-to-back -back titles. I won't be too disappointed if we miss out on it. But the most important thing is at least a top two finish and automatic promotion to the Bundesliga. Keep on scoring goals keep on winning games that will be the case and for our penultimate game of today's episode Firth here at home what a goal to start the game off Gedekli I believe goal number 6 this season making it 1-0 but if you thought that was the goal of the season you were waiting for when you saw the title think again because now you've just seen it yes 10 minutes after the restart and Julian Guto scores his second goal of the season they've both been crackers as well the first one that Thierry Henry-esque flare shot but this goal is the goal of the season no doubt about it Diawusi picked Picks him out of the back stick because it's a winger to winger combination. Brilliant floated ball, but the first touch on the chest and the finish on the volley. I barely show replays, let alone two of them, but that's one of my favourite goals in FIFA 21. Look at how clean that is. Absolute clean strike into the back of the net. 2 0 Dresden, and again, that is my favourite goal of the series so far. Definitely the goal of the season, and one of my favourite in FIFA 21 altogether. That, that ball. That first touch on the chest and then the first time volley as well, that was absolutely glorious. It just looks so aesthetically pleasing, you know. I love those goals that just look so cool. Just really, yeah, just aesthetically pleasing. It looked really, really awesome. Yeah, great technique and a 2-0 victory extends the unbeaten run. For our fourth and final game of today's episode here at Dresden, Hanover 96. Great team for an RTG, by the way, uh, in Germany. I think I mentioned that before in the reverse fixture. We're taking them on here in Dresden, uh, aiming to keep the unbeaten run alive and extend the gap at the top of the table uh, fell behind early but I wasn't really too worried about that because we've been in this position many, many times before. Yes, we're known for being a high-powered offensive team. We're known for scoring a lot of goals, but we're also known for being the comeback kids. Right after we fell behind, we equalised straight away. Diawusi makes it 1-1. We're back on level terms. And then three minutes for the break, a chance to get in front for the first time in the game. Gadikli holds the ball up well, rolls it through to Ransford Yubawa. Quick ball through to Diawusi down the left-hand side and a lovely finish into the far corner as well. I mentioned earlier, Diawusi this season hasn't scored as many goals 
as last season, but he's still a really important player in our team. Chips in with an assist every now and then and still can be a reliable source of goals on a regular basis. So 2-1 Dresden, Diawusi turns the game on its head single-handedly. Then three minutes after the restart, Ransford Yeboah says, don't forget about me, I'm still the top scorer in this team. Makes it 3-1 Dresden, two goal cushion, four minutes after the restart. After a great little ball through there by Marvin as we go two goals up and then with 11 minutes to go in the game, a chance to make it 4-1 and wrap the points up in style. And what a brilliant assist this was from Marvin Schaefer. Oh, inch perfect. Chip through ball over the top. Not to rounds for Dubois, but to his strike partner, Gadikli, who gets goal number seven, I believe, for the season as we complete the route. Dynamo Dresden 4, Hanover 96-1. Once again, the comeback Kings come from behind to win the game comfortably. And because of that win there with 12 games to go, we're now 14 clear of both Union Berlin in third and Bielefeld in fourth, but also five clear of SD Freiburg with the far better goal difference record as well. 12 games remaining in the second Liga. Surely, as things stand, we're going to pull away and wrap up back-to-back -back promotions and touch wood, fingers crossed, back-to-back -back titles as well. Don't choke now, Doxy boy. But that was this episode of Club and Country, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode, hopefully featuring more fantastic goals like in today's episode. Very soon.